Shalom Israel, and welcome to Hebrew Chronicles Publishing. Now, you may have been uh, seeing posts on Facebook, Instagram, and DeviantArt of a, of a banner with a young man, a teen, with locks in his hair, wearing a long decorative trench coat. We're going to get into it right now. Now, that the story that I've actually recently just start, uh, completed, it's entitled The Prophet. Now I'm going to talk to you about what inspired me to write this thing, and also I'm going to get into some of the plot of the story. The inspiration, what inspired me to write this short story? Because a lot of, uh, when it comes to writing, writers are inspired by other things that have been written or seen. Sometimes you get ideas from, you know, uh, sitting down in a diner or being in a fancy restaurant. You might be sitting in a truck like myself. I'm, I'm an owner operator, I uh, drive trucks. And sometimes you might be driving in your truck and you're like, huh, just daydreaming and like, hey, I got an idea, you know, especially if you're a writer. A writer has, I, there's no set place when it comes to a real writer on what he's going to write, what he or she's going to write, okay? So we're gonna start with uh, what inspired me to write this story. So. And it comes from multiple things, okay? So, the first thing that inspired me to write this story was the history of King David. You know, King David was, uh, he had a lot of siblings, and he was uh, chosen by the Lord in, the, in his youth to uh, become king, to rule over the nation of Israel, and as a supreme power, under, of course, Christ and himself. But he was given, he was blessed with uh, many different abilities that exceed the normal abilities of a, a mortal man, okay? Superman strength, speed, and durability, you know? And also, uh, ins the other inspiration I got to write this story was the history of Moses. Moses was a, um, a high authority in Egypt when the children of Israel were in bondage. And... The Lord took him from being uh, one of the, the second most powerful because even he was, I would say he was actually more popular when you read the history uh, than Ramses before he became Pharaoh. But either way, uh, Moses actually was a very powerful individual. He was a, a general. It said that he was wise in all the knowledge of Egypt. Okay, He had everything that Mo, uh, that Egypt could ask for when it comes to knowledge and royalty. And the Lord took him from off the top of that pinnacle and brought him down to his people's level. And once he got that knowledge of who he actually was, and he got the knowledge of what his people and the prophecies con consisting of his people, he let go of all earthly attachments to help his people and lead them out of Egypt because he understood the, the pending destruction that was hanging over Egypt that was coming. Nobody believed him, took him as a joke, just like a lot of the prophets when they go out there and prophesy on the streets, people te take it as a joke, no different than the people did in Egypt. The difference between now and then is the Lord was making his works manifest physically. A lot of things are being actually moved spiritually now. Now you're starting to see a lot of earthquakes, animals dying, uh, locusts are coming out of nowhere you're starting to have a lot of these insects come out of nowhere and on top of that you're starting to have something called COVID-19 which actually goes into prophecy as uh, pestilence so a lot of things are actually being manifested just going over a lot of people's heads so Moses also inspired the history of Moses also inspired me to write this uh, the history of Joshua uh, the history of Joshua, Joshua was actually with uh, the Israelites when he came out of Egypt. And he was the one that actually took up the leadership role after Moses was gone. But what inspired me to, when it comes to him to write the story is he was trained to be a leader. You know, un unlike a lot of people think, they say that you're born an actual leader. A leader is not always born, just like the Israelites there's only certain ones that are actually going to be elect to actually have that mindset to be able to do the things that they're capable of doing. 
that exceeds all the other people. Even if everyone's doing the same thing, you're actually going to see some actually are actually able to do it far better than others. And there's nothing wrong with that. But the thing is what the history of Joshua that inspired me is he actually sat underneath Moses and he went everywhere Moses went. He was like that guy that was underneath Moses arm, you know, and Joshua learned everything. Like it says in the book of uh, Sirach, to sit under the elders and learn from them and wear out the footsteps of their door of their doorstep meaning you're always going to be around them ready to learn and don't get mad at me guys also some earthly stuff inspired me to write this uh like uh buffy the vampire slayer now you might say okay he just said king david joshua and moses what does that have to do with uh buffy the vampire slayer i'm gonna tell you um in this story you have a prophet which is Yuri. He's the main star of the of the uh, of the story. And then you have Amos, which is his scribe. In this story, the scribe is elected before the uh, chosen one is chosen. You know, uh, the purpose of a scribe is to record everything that the prophet actually has done throughout his training, uh, his defeats, and his everyday life, his trials and tribulations. He records everything. Uh, strengths and weaknesses and the purpose of the scribe doing this is just in case he dies or the prophet dies before his time um, when it comes to like uh, fulfilling the prophecy the records that are actually recorded will be beneficial to the next prophet that is chosen and the next scribe that is chosen so he'll actually inherit the things that were written down before he actually was chosen to learn from the scribe that actually wrote down those records and to, and to learn also about the prophet. So he'll learn the strengths and weaknesses of the previous prophet and be able to delegate and actually be able to mold his teachings to the new prophet that is chosen. So it has its beneficiaries. Now, uh, let's get into the, prop, the uh, plot of the story, okay? So as I said before, our main character for this series is Yuri. His name is Yuri. And uh, he's the son of Uriel and Hannah uh, Galit. Now, that name's gonna actually play a big role in this in this short story. So just bear with me, Israel. Well. Now, his father served in the U.S. military um, for eight years, and he left his ten-year-old uh, son with his uh, Ishmaelite mother. Okay. Therefore, the child grew to despise his father for that reason. Giving himself uh, fully because of that anger, he gave himself fully over to his uh, his mother's traditions and ways of life, which if she's an Ishmaelite, you should already know what she's involved in. Okay, so uh, now after eight years have um, passed, he's now 18 years of age, uh, he met uh, Hannah's kin, meaning his uncles, uh, a lot of his, uh, his aunties on his mother's side of the family. He didn't know anything about his father because his father left when he was 10. So there's only so much that you can remember at 10 years old, okay? And uh, when when they um, threatened his mother to actually take him from, to, take him from her, uh, to further teach him the more of the uh, deeper, uh, um, the deeper wisdoms, if you wanna call it that, of, of, of Allah, uh, he decided to no longer involve himself in any religious ties. Uh, he dropped the Bible, he dropped the Quran, he dropped everything, okay? And um, this, of course, uh, made him an enemy, uh, or what you would call an, what you would call an infidel, according to their beliefs. And an enemy of an enemy if if it, if he was not to be cleansed uh, at his 19th birthday, okay, uh, or day of birth, because we don't deal with birthdays in Israel. Of course, we all know that. Um, now the time, now time passes, of course, he's like 19 years old. Well, he's 18 and a half, you know, and time passes and he, uh, he's found by a young, beautiful girl named Sarah and he's educated and trained physically by an old man named Amos. Amos is of course the scribe of the series. Okay. Uh, who tells him that he's been chosen to bear the power of the 12. Now the 12 are a hidden council of men who chooses a champion, uh, who chooses a champion every 40 years. 
uh, granting them, uh, granting this, uh, the prophet or their champion, a portion of their power, pretty much the mastery over all five spiritual elements, which are earth, wind, water, and fire and lightning. Now, those are basic ones. Almost everyone uses, right? But imagine one having gravity and matter manipulation, being able to command time, creating uh, miniature black holes, right? It's crazy, right? I wonder why would a person have to be endowed with this kind of power uh, who could face a being at that caliber, right? You might be asking yourself. As the saying goes, to have a powerful hero, you must have a more menacing villain, right? Because the villain of the stories actually are the ones who actually uh, make up the, the power of the character of your hero. If you have a bad supervillain, you're going to have a bad superhero, period. That's in any story, right? Now, the catch to him obtaining his power is he must actually uh, uh, reach the biblical age of 20 years of age. You read about that in the book of Numbers. Um, when a, a man or a woman becomes 20 years of age, uh, they're considered to be an adult at that time. Unlike what people say, because uh, you have a lot of different doctrines saying, oh, uh, in the Jewish faith, uh, you can take a girl at a young age. That is a lie. According to the Bible, a man can only enter into a military at an age of 20. So if a man can only actually uh, go into a military, that means he's of age of an adult because you can't, they're not going to have children out fighting wars, right or wrong. Therefore, if you're old enough to be in the military, then you're old enough to get married because no one marries kids. You're supposed to be an adult. You understand? All praises. So once he got to, if a person has to, if, the, if your enemy has the knowledge that you are becoming that powerful when you ascend to that age, right? Think about it. If your enemy knows you more than you know yourself, who's more of the threat? So I uh, hope you guys like the content we're creating. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Don't forget to like, subscribe if you haven't already. Also, make sure you visit us on Twitter, Facebook, and also become a patron for $1 a month. You'll get access to all of our previous stories that were written. You'll get two new uh, posts um, every month. And remember, Israel, it's our responsibility to contribute righteous literature and art to our descendants. Shalom. Shalom.